Hello again, it's me, I'm back for another vlog. This is Christmas time and I've got a bit of time on my hands, so I thought I'd do something for you. Now, Christmas. I have been very lucky, obviously been a very good boy this year, and Santa has brought me a Canon Pixma Pro 10S printer, which I'm having a lot of fun with so far. Um, I printed a few prints off it. And I thought what I'd do today is set myself a challenge so I'm going, I've got some time tomorrow to go out and shoot a sunrise and maybe something else, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna spend the morning up in Suffolk uh, at Southwold and I'm gonna come home, I'm gonna process the images or image and I'm gonna print one out uh, all in the same day. Um, I might do some drone footage, I might do some panoramics, I don't know yet. Um, so that's the plan. Preparation so far, I've checked the weather and at sunrise, which is five past eight tomorrow morning, the cloud cover is broken, so it's gonna be semi-cloud, semi-sun, which is perfect. If I'm lucky enough to get the sun on the horizon, then it should light the clouds from underneath, and that's that always makes for a lovely sunrise. And the tide at Southwold is, um, is low tide, which is ideal, because there should be lots of reflections on the sand of the pier and the tide will be coming in so by the time i get there it would have been coming in for about two hours which is about right you need a low tide really it's health world so things look good so in the meantime enjoy the intro and uh, this is my trip to south world Sunrise is not for another half an hour, but I have some lovely red light over there. Just see this view of the bit now. What I've been trying to do is a panoramic of the pier. It's just a beautiful day, some cracking clouds. I think we might be alright when the sun actually rises over the horizon. We might put some sun down off the bottom of these clouds here, so it might light up again. Okay. It depends on the horizon, how's on there. But, um, it's a cracking day, isn't it? Beautiful. Day after Boxing Day. Let's see what we get there. So let's talk about the setup. We've got a DXT2 and on the front of it, a polarizing filter just to take the glare, well, not a lot of glare, but anything off the seat to enrich the colours a little bit. Um, in my pocket, I've got a little stopper and a 0.6 grad, two stop hard grad. Hard grad in uh, at the seascape because the horizon is very straight, so I haven't got to worry about softening it around trees and anything. So a hard grad is the thing to do. Um, just to pull out any light, any, any difference in the light between the sky and the sea. At the moment, it's pretty even, it's pretty even light, so I don't think I'm going to need that necessarily. Little stopper I've got just to go, I might want to blur the water. Composition, if I don't get wet, is pretty much the pier on the left hand side. And what 
I'm looking to get looking at the water in the front. I don't want to do a 50-50 split on the on the composition. What I'm looking at doing is getting more of the sea in. So it's kind of the if you imagine the thirds, the composition will affect the thirds. The horizon's on the top third, and then there's two thirds water, um, one third sky. I've done a nice panoramic, which I'll have a look at later. Um, other than that, the exposure is going to be about f11, something around about two seconds. But I might want a bit longer, so if I do that, I'll put the little stopper in um, to get a little bit longer. Let's have a little shoot then. So looking at the moment, these waves are coming in and as, as the backwater is going back out, it's creating some nice shapes. I'm looking for something geometric, maybe even, um, the camera's turned itself off, that's handy. I've been talking too long. Turn it back on again. So I've got 1.2 seconds on F16. F16, right, I'd rather go F11, so it's getting a bit light. I'm looking at the backwash there. You'll be able to see on the pictures, you, you get some kind of movement, which I quite personally like. I know some photographers don't like that. And I've got digital. I haven't got film, so I can take as many pictures of, as I want. Shooting raw. Um, but it's going to be pretty easy to process this, I think. The histogram's quite bunched up. Okay, I've got no highlights burning out. I've got no shadows um, bunching up. So there's plenty of room on the histogram, and I'm bang in the middle. Really easy exposure to shoot. The hard bit has been driving here and getting out on the beach, getting out of bed, really. Using the cable release, it stops me shaking the camera when I press it. Um, an old-fashioned camera release, I love these. I can lock it off with this little knurled nut here if I want to do a long exposure. But, um, I don't think I do. Tide, I've checked the tide. I knew the tide was low about an hour or so ago, but it's starting to come in, which I'm conscious of. There we go, whoa, that's good. We're at a back loss there. I'm conscious of the fact that the tide's coming in, but Southwold is very safe. There's loads of places to escape from. Some places you have to be very careful. Um, certainly Saltwick Bay in Yorkshire, if you photograph in the black nav, you have to be very careful not to get cut off. It's very important to be safe. Obviously, nothing's worth risking yourself for. I know a photographer who's um, jumped down on, off some groins and, and really hurt their leg badly. Luckily, they were with somebody else, so somebody else could sound, or sound the alarm or get them off the beach. Be aware of your, of your um, location. Be aware of the situation that you're in. I have a photograph that a place down the road from Southwold called Ben Acre when I was on the beach and behind me was sheer cliffs which are kind of made of they're made of clay. They crumble very easily, it would be hard to climb off them if I needed to, but so you can get cut off if you're not sure. You should always be very aware of what the tide is doing. Is it coming in? Is it going out? If it's going out, obviously it's less important, but uh, if it's coming in, you need to be sure that you can escape and get off the beach. It's also good to take a photographic friend if you have one. Um, downsides to that, sometimes you're in each other's way, but it's, it's quite nice to know that you can call on somebody and have a mobile phone may be handy, although some places on the coast you get no signal. So again, don't take it lightly. Make sure that you, you're safe. Anyway, back to me on the beach. So the colour, pretty much, has gone out of the sky altogether, but it might come back. It's a very faint pink glow on the horizon, very faint. Years ago, when I first started, I'd have been tempted to put a, a grad on and try and... Whoa! Try, I nearly got wet, and try and pull that colour out, but I don't like doing that anymore. I think it's much more subtle. Nature is wonderful as itself, you don't need to sort of adjust it too much. Um, there's some fishermen the other side of these rocks, which means I'm shooting here, but I might go and have a look over there in a sec. So, there we go, I've done some long exposures, the, it's now sunrise and 
the light's not really happened, but it's a decent sky look, still looks nice. A lovely, 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 lovely pier. Really nice, beautiful to be out, calm day, very pleasant, nice and warm for this time of year. Um, I've done some long exposures with the uh, little stopper, just give me 30 seconds or so. It's about perfect to blur the water in the front. Clouds aren't moving very, very fast. It's a few contrails, which are a bit of a pain. Um, this is obviously Christmas, so it's December. I've shot this pier normally in April, May time. Uh, in April, May time, you get some really nice light on this building here because the sun, at the moment, the sun's coming out directly behind my head. Uh, in, in April, May time, the sun will actually rise about there. So if you get a nice clear day, the, the light will shine onto the pier. It looks really, really lovely. But um, I'm really loving that sky, it looks beautiful. Still a little bit pink in the air there, or a little bit orangey kind of colour. It'll look quite nice, I think. I might go and do some drone pictures in a minute. Uh, maybe of Wolverswick, and if I do that, I will um, talk to you then. And just before I go, um, really impressed with the Fuji. I'm just going to talk about this. So what I've done with this is um, I've now put a grad on, and it's 0.6 lead grad because the sky is now, as you can see behind me, is quite bright. Um, I need that on the front, okay, and you can see if I show you that, basically I put the line of the grad on the horizon, so that's going to, you can now even see on the back of the camera now, I hope, that that looks better. And that's giving me an exposure, put the aperture on automatic, sorry, yes, no, the shutter speed automatic, I'm using F11. And it's given me a fifth of a second, which is not really long enough to blur the water to my liking. I'll get too many lines on the picture, so I want to make that a bit lower than that. So I'm going to use my little stopper, which goes as close to the lens as you can get it. I'm going to front this holder. Can't do I've got that in the wrong place. Okay. So that goes in there just to cover everything, so that goes dark. The viewfinder goes dark, the LCD, and in the case it comes with, I you get a little card which I've stuck on the front, so I can work out fifth of a second. It's round about there. It's a 15 second exposure. Okay, so I work out. There's also um, an app you can get on your phone on your phone, which is really good because I've just bought the 1.4. Uh, infrared neutral density one of the pro filters that lee use or lee make and it's not cheap but it gives you a very neutral color cast when i used to use the big stopper which i bought and sold i never got on with it i had a blue cast that i didn't like and get rid of it couldn't be bothered to get rid of it in photoshop just didn't like the thing so i got rid of it and but then i heard about these infrared ones the ir nds that lee do they are color neutral and that's been fantastic. I've got that in the bag to use for a bit later. Give me a long exposure at the moment, somewhere probably around four days. And that's a joke by the way, but a long exposure. So the little stop is what I need. The little stopper I feel I don't get any color cast on. It's been very good. So that's been what I've been using this morning. And the brilliant thing is that I've got this thing on this display on the Fuji, which just comes out. So I've been shooting on the rocks behind me and I have the camera at an awkward angle, but I can just literally rotate the screen and I can look at it from over here. So I haven't got to stand behind the camera, which is brilliant. And also with low shots, I've enjoyed using that because it will tilt upwards as well. Okay, so I'm um, really loving that about the camera. I think this is something I wouldn't have got with my Canon. Well, it definitely wouldn't because the screen didn't, didn't articulate. So it's a really good feature. Right, I think that's probably it from now for, for South Wales. I'll probably get a parking ticket. I'm gonna to go to Walberswick and we'll see what we can find around the harbour. So look what I've discovered. Whoa. 
I kind of half remember this was here, but I've never ever visited this place. But there's a load of old, it looks like an old groin or an old harbour that's, that's broken down by the weather. So I'm thinking some long exposures, because the sunrise obviously has come and gone a long time ago. So I'm thinking some long exposures. I'm going to get out my um, long exposure grad, my four and a half, which is a 15 stop grad do some long misty waters type stuff what a brilliant find look at be excited okay so here we go we've got a um the leave 4.5 irnd filter on the front 15 stops the normal exposure is uh, a 70 for a second so that's giving me an eight minute exposure i'm gonna hold the code releasing for that much time i've also got a polarizer on the front to get rid of some of the reflection off the water and a 0.6 or so a, a two-stop grad just to hold that sky back in it's a bit bright and uh, eight minutes to go then let's do the exposure so that was interesting the eight minute exposure unfortunately meant that the tide had come in so uh, the tripod has moved so i've tried it a couple of times and given up with it i'm now using a little stopper which is a six stop nd filter which has given me about 25 seconds which is, is long enough I'm just waiting now, I'll move back a bit. There's a bit of foreground interest. Ooh, where are we there? See that post there? I'm just waiting for my footprints to be just to be uh, washed away and then we'll take the picture. So we're back. Let's have a little look in uh, in Lightroom then and see what we've got. Um, Doug generally talks about that little tingly feeling you get when you when you've got an image that really really um, moves you. Didn't really get it in Walshwick. Bit of a bit manic with the tide coming in, but it's definitely a location that I've now earmarked to go back and have another go at. If nothing comes of these, I and mean, I haven't looked, they've got some nice ones with the 50 to 140 lens, I think. Um, maybe a couple at the end with with the wide angle, but Southwold certainly before. Um, dawn the, the, the panoramic got a good feeling about that but we'll see right so let's have a look at Lightroom I'm going to flick to the computer now and talk to you through talk you through that um, not the best at processing okay but I've realized after many years that less is more so we'll have a little look at what, what we've got and hopefully get something that I can make a print out of so here we go, it's over to Lightroom and I'll talk to you there. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. We've got the SD card plugged in the side of the Mac and selected here. So I'm gonna copy these into my two terabyte external drive so it doesn't take any space on my Mac. And I'm building smart previews, which means I can disconnect that and still play with them. No developing sessions put on at all I used to have auto selected but it kind of um, I sometimes used to take it all, all these settings back off again so these are just purely out of the camera um, if we have a click I've got no keywords at the moment so if I keyword this as we go along that will make it if I can spell properly that will make it easier to find them at a later date uh, so we're going to go South World Suffolk um, Wolverswick Although these top ones are not from Wolver's Week, it just makes it easier to find. Um, see, oops, escape, sunrise, something like that. Okay, so that's going to be applied to the collection. I'm going to add them to a collection which is going to be called Seascape. So I've already got some pictures in there. Um, and now we're going to import the pictures. So here we go. We've got, first of all, a couple. So the first thing I did was shot, shot a panoramic, obviously portrait, um, working from left to right, overlapping slightly, so that the software can stitch them together easily. Um, it's going to take a little while to come in all these, so I'm going to just going to freeze this for a second, and I'll be right back with you. So some of the images, uh, all the images are now uploaded. We're just building some smart uh, images here. This is what those two operations are. So if we have a quick look through, this is Wolberswick. 
Um, we'll talk to you about those images in a moment. Some first impressions. Don't like the colour there, really. Don't like the colour there, really. Um, some of size well here in the mist. My first impressions are I don't like the colour of the sky. That's not overgraded. I don't think that's a 0 0.6, so only a two stop grade filter. It was a grey, quite a grey sky. Um, well, it seems to be looking at this one, sorry. Let's go back out. Let's go back to the top then. So let's have a look. We've got um, the first thing I did was a panoramic. So shot portrait, one after the other from the left to right, overlapping slightly. Shot on the three legged thing tripod, and it comes with a panoramic plate on the top. So as long as you get the panoramic plate level, you haven't got to have the tripod level, which is really handy. And then you just sweep the thing from left to right, the camera from left to right, shooting a lot, shooting pictures. You should set the shutter speed to manual, so you should lock the exposure down. I didn't on this particular occasion, but it doesn't really matter. Apart from that frame there, the sky is pretty much okay. The exposure certainly is fairly even throughout. Um, it might blend. We'll have a look. It might be the fact that I didn't lock the exposure down that those two are different to those two, but it might still work. Some nice, straightforward landscapes. I'm loving the pink light. As you can see, that one there is particularly good, actually. Let's have a little look at that. Some really nice light reflecting the wet sand on the beach. It's quite narrow, you can see this cloud actually is moving towards the horizon, so eventually it just kind of blocks it all off. But um, the clouds have been further back here, or broken up, or we might have had a really spectacular sunrise. Still quite like it, it's okay. I quite like that one actually, because of the colour. I like the greyness in the cloud. Remember, this is a straight out of the camera unprocessed, so. There's a little bit of work to do on it, but you can see that I haven't burnt out the highlights, there's nothing flashing. I've got my highlights and my shadows. Um, look at the histogram. There's the, hi sorry, there's the highlights, and there are the shadows. Took this on ISO 200, uh, interestingly, on F8, so three second exposure. No grade whatsoever, and that's how it's come out. Quite pleased with that. There's a little bit of space here for me to play with it highlights which I'll do um, in the develop module but that's quite a nice image I like that one so I'm going to mark that as a four just so I can have a look at them um, that's quite nice looking at the cloud the sorry, clouds the water at the front here interesting shape that's better I like the shape of that better than that one I like the sweeping lines through there it kind of cuts the image in half a little bit Takes that cool. I think your eye is going to be attracted to there, there first, and then it's kind of cut it off. So maybe not the one. That's nicer actually because the leading line there takes us round to this bit. So that might be a, a nice one. We'll mark that as a four. And that one's okay. Apart from I never ever like these big lines where the waves are coming in. That's why I like to use a longer exposure. Uh, as you can see, this one is three seconds. Needed to be a little bit longer than that, really. Some nice light on the horizon. Quite nice. Let's mark that as a as a four as well. Have a look at these later on. And that one again. That's got the classic. I don't like that wave break in there. So for me, that's a no. Although the light is probably this is the best the light was really. Okay. So let's have a look. Around here, we've got the panoramic. Um, that one there tells me that I made a mistake, and if you look at it, the reason for it is I hadn't got the pan head lined up properly, so it's starting to slope. So there was pointless doing that. I noticed it at that point, it stopped. And rather than lose the light, I only shot again, and this one should have it level. Yeah, if you can see the horizon on these, the horizon is level, so that should more than pretty much. So that should be okay. Uh, and then this next one is also okay. Just shooting there, and that's actually quite nice. Quite like that again. That's not quite straight. I don't know why that is. Let's go back to have a look at the full thumbnails. Just flicking through. Interesting. This one. 
I've got a super wide um, angle holder on the leaf filters uh, system, but even with that at 10 mil, this is what I shot out there. Look, an F16, but that makes a difference. I've got a little bit of the filter holder in, which I could obviously crop out if I wanted. I think what I did then was I started to shoot 11 mil. Okay, so that last millimetre made the difference. Say exposure is pretty much the same, 2.5 and 2.6, so I just got rid of that. Um, that's quite nice, that one. With these, it's really all about the the waves. So that's probably the best wave shape. I don't like that bit. This bit here is lovely. Okay, but I don't like that, and there's also no colour in the sky, so they're going. Okay, you see the exposure go up to a second now. F16, trying to get it as, as slow as I could. But this is getting lighter and lighter. That's quite nice. Again, I don't like that. You see with 0.8 of a second, we've still got sufficient motion in the, in the backwash to make it interesting, but that I don't like really. So and there's not sufficient light in the sky to make it, make it decent. A bit disappointed actually with some of these. I wish I'd have taken a little bit more care. That's nice. Let's mark that. That there may be some light in here. It looks a little bit orangey pinky because it did, as you saw from the video, it's flicking in and out. That might be half decent. I don't suspect it will be. It might be a nice black and white though, so we'll leave that one. Um, I wish I'd taken more care with the waves and had a little bit more, a little bit more care on those. But there we go. So this is from the other side of the those stones. And this one's a 15 second exposure. So obviously underexposed a little bit. It's plainer and that's better. You can see that's 31 seconds. So that was the problem. The exposure wasn't correct. So this is a 30 second exposure. Got a little bit of movement in the cloud there. I'm going to mark that. But you can see that with a 15 or 30 second exposure, you don't get any of those lines, which I quite like. It makes it look a little bit more surreal. I quite like that one. That's a decent picture. I'm happy with that. Um, that's probably the one I'll go for first, actually. So let's give that a five star so I can distinguish it. Exposure's wrong, exposure's wrong. Uh, F11, a thirtieth of a second. This was the one on the rocks where I could look through the side of the viewfinder of the EVF, which would have been quite nice, but I hate these aeroplanes have started to come over. I don't like that. So that's gone, which is a shame because there were some nice. You can see where the cloud, this lower cloud is breaking up. The higher cloud is picking up the light from the sunrise, which is quite nice. But that is just, I mean, contrast are there, but I just don't like that. Sorry. So that's going. Um, and that's when we pretty much stopped, I think. These are with the little stopper. So those are the cell phone images. I'm going to start a pan developing or merging together. So we're going to go with, um, I think we'll go with this one. Uh, all I'm going to do is, is hold the Alt key down, the Shift key, sorry, select all of those, and we're going to photo merge them into Panorama. And that should start to do that for me. So I'm going to pause this while this is creating, then we'll come back and see what we've got. We are, this has all been merged in photo sorry in Lightroom. Um, it won't it won't merge in perspective mode. I have had to paste some of these together. Look at the way it's handled the waves so that one there and that one there it doesn't look quite natural. Also there's no interest in the left hand side so I'm gonna dump this one and have a look at the next pan. Okay I want some of the, there's some sticks there or a um, a marker thing out there to the left which I thought I'd catch it but I haven't so let's have a look again. Okay, back as you in a second. Cancel that. This is the post that I was talking about in that one there. Um, but it hasn't seemed to have merged it. Let's try with the next one. I like to have something on the left, something on the right of a panoramic just to hold the eye, eye's attention, stop it wandering off the page. So let's have a little go with that. So select all of those. Right click, photo merge, panorama, 
um, and we'll let this one build and again I'll come back to you in a second and we'll see how what's gone on. So this is the first uh, pan that I shot actually. You can see though that there are the posts that I was talking about because I need to hold the eye from stop the eye from wandering out of the picture. So we've got a bit of balance to the frame now. Appear on the right, these little posts on the left and the lovely sunrise in the middle. It's not quite straight, so I'm going to have to play with that in Photoshop and just tweak the lens correction, the distortion, which I can do quite easily. Um, so that's interesting, but that's the image I like. If I look at the, the other one, this was the third one we took, which I prefer the colour on, I much prefer that, but there's no post on the left, and as far as I'm concerned, you have to have something, because for me, even though it's not straight, the eye is going to, going to look here, and just wander out of the picture. So th this is the one we're going to be using, I think. I'm just going to go back to the first ones at Southworld and have a look at the various frames we've got. This one here, um, which was the, pretty much the first one that I shot. I've had a little play with this actually. And this one here. Actually, let's go back and reset this one, and I'll show you what I did with it. Uh, develop settings, reset, set it back to how it was. Okay, that's how we had it. This one, that's quite nice, don't mind that. Don't like, as I said, this lump here, but other than that, it's quite good. If you look at the histogram, it's pretty much covered. There's nothing being clipped on the top here, there's nothing being blocked at the bottom, so that's quite nice. That's an interesting exposure, quite like it. Do I prefer that one? Mm, I don't know, maybe not. I think the waves are better in this one, personally. I think the eye goes, the linear lines go along there. Off the sun, that's okay. This one, maybe the eyes are more going out of the frame, so maybe I think this one's better. Okay, but I also like. And I've got, and we were talking earlier about this little kind of buzz and feel you get, and this one to me has given me the best feeling. Um, there's some nice light on these rocks here, look, which I quite like. Let's check it sharp. It's going to just build, build that at the moment. There we go, it's all right. I like some light on here, it was quite nice. Lighting on the end, there's a fisherman here somewhere. Um, the histogram looks okay, there's, there's some room here on the highlights, some, a little bit of room on the blacks. So if we go to here, what I've done in, in the past is just whacked auto to see what happens, but it, it's kind of thinking it's too dark, so it's it's now trying to sort that out and it's just whacked up the whites. Um, I've burnt those out a bit, I could pull those in a little bit. But I quite like the mood that I had before. Um, so I'm going to just take that off again. I can do that. I'm just going to effect a reset. Right click it. And reset that. So let's go back to how we had it before. Now, it looks a little dark. So I'm going to just lift that a touch. And that's, I'd say, about right. Okay, contrast needs a little bit of a kick. But it's quite a subtle picture, so that's not too bad. Okay, still got some space here. I'm going to have a little go bringing the highlights up a little bit. Just to give it a little bit more contrast like that. And the blacks will just take down a touch. Okay, let's bring the whites up a little bit. That's better. Let's pull those highlights back in again. Okay, that's looking good. Now, a little bit of work to do here. The next thing I need to make sure that I do is straighten it up. So if we click on this crop box, the angle here, spirit level, what I can then do is run it along the horizon because the horizon will be straight. Okay, about there, let go, and it will, there we go. It's pretty straight anyway. I normally shoot with the spirit level in the camera. So it should be pretty straight. Now the only thing I want to do now is I just want to improve the, the look of that. 
Uh, do this in various ways. We're just going to tweak the clarity a little bit, give it a little bit of a boost. No, it just makes it, in my eyes, a little bit sort of sharper and punchier, gives it a bit of pop, a bit of vibrance. Um, very reluctant to play with the saturation, but there we go, a bit of seven there. But also, what I've been playing around with lately is a bit of split toning. So, if I click on that, now the pinks I've got there, I'm roughly, I'm going to really exaggerate this, that's about the colour. But obviously that's far too bright, so what we're going to do is pull that right down, just to give it a bit of subtlety, something around 15% maybe, maybe that, just to flood it a little bit more with the light that I saw. Uh, I'm not trying to make this unrealistic, um, it, it definitely was there, that's how I felt about it, and that, the blues were kind of... Kind of there, it's more of a purpley blue, and I do quite like these two colours again. That's too much, we're going to pull that right down just to give it a bit of a kick, you know, like that. Okay, and I think I feel that's a better way to just improve the colour. So, the next thing I'm going to do, I don't think I need a grey on the, on the clouds, that's all fine. Um, this doesn't need to be that sharp, so what I'm going to do is just have a little play with these rocks and I want to just bring them in a little bit so this now opens up a new dialog box I'm going to press the square uh, square bracket just to make that bigger and it's auto it's set for auto masking so you can see it's just finding the edge of the rocks as I drag along it's clever this is Lightroom just finding the edge Okay, it's going to take a little while to catch up. Let's do that. Gonna hold the space bar down, drag it across. Some signs on there which I'm going to leave because that's what was there. Okay, whoops, I mean, I've got a little bit too mad there. It might be okay though because it is dark. A bit like that. Let's so put on the edge there. And I'm going to leave off there. Now with the whole thing, I'm going to turn the mask off. And I'm going to just going to lower the exposure just a fraction. Sorry, wrong way. Lighten up a little bit. Don't want to make it look unrealistic, but I reckon something like that ought to do us. That's better, so there's a bit more detail in there. Might also do the same thing with the buildings. My left square bracket now. Let's just show that mask, make sure that's doing the right thing. There we go, yeah. That's okay. Hold the space bar down on the keyboard, move across the same thing to this building, hold the keyboard down with the um, space bar, just uh, select the hand tool, thank for that, and finally on the end, and we're going to do the same with this, turn the mask off, just tweak it and give it a little bit of kick, Not too much, maybe a bit more contrast. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit more. I'm just doing this by eye, really. Contrast will make it stick out a little bit. And let's go with that. Let's have a look. There we go. And that, pretty much, is ready to go. Got some little details in here. So what I'm now going to do is have a little quick look at it full size. And then we'll press the print button. So we'll do that make a print of that. So I'll come back to you in a second. This it all looks fine. Um, it's giving me the most tingly out of all of them, I would say. So this is the one I'm going to print, I think. Um, all I need to do now is sharpen. So I've got the sharpening box out. I just want to show you, um, for those of you who don't know, how to sharpen, because it's something I struggled with for a long time before. Radius set to one, pretty much all the, all, always. 
Um, I'm just going to apply a mask. So if I hold the Alt key down on the mask um, and I tweak it this way, what's going to happen is it's going to mask out the sky, which I don't need sharpened. I need it nice and soft. It's going to mark out the sand and the sea. And now basically, if I keep moving the slider, the white bits are the bits that it's going to sharpen. Now, the only bits I need to sharpen in this image, and we keep going, keep going again, the only things I need to sharpen are the pier and the edges of the rocks about there. Okay, let go now. And now what I can do, if I hold the Alt key again, it will turn it to black and white because um, it's easy to see in monochrome. I'm just going to hit the sharpening quite hard. I can move it right up to here. Uh, keep going, keep going, keep going. And it's only sharpening that pier. That's fine. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with it other than that. And it needs to be sharp so that it stands out. Um, and that's pretty much done. So that's ready to go now. So all I'm going to now do is go into the print module. Normally, I would spend some time checking again and rechecking. I'd probably go away, come back again a bit later, um, just to make sure I'm happy with it. But as I've set myself this challenge. We're going to go with this. So I've gone into print. You can see Lightroom is already set up uh, for my previous. I don't need to worry too much about the margin. It's quite nice to have a little margin. I can always cut it down um, on my cutting board. It's rotated. I haven't got anything worried about on any of these. I can look at the guides. Brilliant. I don't need to leave a watermark on it. Um, I don't need the info. I just need it printed. This is the box that I need. Printer is already selected. Print resolution 300 ppi. Um, I'm going to turn that down to low because I've already sharpened it. 16 bit. The media type is going to be glossy paper. Okay, this is the profile from my monitor. Perceptual intent, print adjustment. Now, I normally have the brightness on just a fraction. I'm going to go to about two or three that that tends to work better from my setup my setup has all been color graded with a color monkey um, it adjusts it locally uh, weekly for me um, so that's I'm pretty happy that that's the same the only thing I haven't done yet is a um, profile for the paper that I'm using but I'm going to use the Canon paper pro platinum glossy um, which the printer knows about uh, he knows what what the paper is, um, so we already have the profile selected. And I don't think it's going to be too far off. But what I intend to do is go to the photo. He's got, I've got some photo speed paper. Um, it's actually delivered yesterday, and I'm going to send a test print off to Photo Speed, who will send me or email me a profile which I can then use, and that will be get me as 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 good as I can. So um, let's switch over to the print button, um, and I'll show you that. Okay, so this is the bit where you find out how dirty my desk is or messy, but I'm in the process of changing man caves. So there's the printer, ready to go. I'm going to press the print button and we'll um, put some paper in it and use this sample pack of Canon Pro Platinum. Okay, so this needs to come up in the guidelines. And I've discovered that you have to shut that otherwise nothing works. Okay, and now I'm gonna press print and I'll come back to you when it's done. slightly 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 bluer than the original the one that appears on the screen um, and it's not the best light this big ring light I'm using it's not a good for easy for you to see but you can see that's pretty close I'm pretty happy with that next thing would be mounting it framing it etc etc well thank you very much if you've stayed with me through the whole journey I appreciate it. this is a long long video 
um, but I wanted to show you the process from start to finish of landscape and seascape photography, um, the way I do it. I'm sure there's loads of things I could have done better. I'm sure there's loads of um, things in Lightroom that I could have done better. And if you want to leave a comment below, please do. I'm pretty hardened as far as uh, my feelings are concerned. If you feel like I need to do something different, then let me know. Um, be good to get a bit of a dialogue going. Thanks ever so much for staying with me to the end. Um, I know it's taken lots of your valuable time, so I'm not gonna waffle on too much more. Um, I intend to do some more of these, some more printing maybe, my journey for that, so maybe some more out on the landscape, um, maybe some drone stuff uh, at some point. So thanks once again very, very, very much for watching. Subscribe if you wanna hear my latest updates um, and hit the like button and that will be great. I've enjoyed doing this video, so uh, hopefully there'll be more to come. In the meantime though, see you again. Thanks again.